Hello and welcome to Right Now for Tuesday the 5th of December 2017, I'm Tim Wilms. Malcolm Turnbull appears likely now to survive the parliamentary killing season as the House sits for the final week this year. There was an improved news poll result released this week which showed the Coalition had closed the gap on Labor in the two-party preferred vote which now sits at 47 to 53% and Turnbull leads Bill Shorten 39 to 33% as preferred Prime Minister. A Fairfax Ipsos poll was also released again with the Coalition trailing in the two-party preferred vote 47 to 53%. Although this is still land slide defeat territory, Turnbull will take solace in the fact that the Ipsos poll found that 71% of voters believe that elected Prime Minister should serve the full term, which rises to 80% amongst coalition voters. Julie Bishop, though, is the preferred Liberal leader, only just on 32%, with Turnbull on 29% and Tony Abbott at 14%. However, an essential poll today paints a more dire picture for the coalition, with them at 45 to 55% behind. The Liberals will most likely not dump Turnbull unless they are certain his replacement can save more seats. A Labor MP has finally become embroiled in the dual citizenship saga as a result of Senators lodging their citizenship declarations. ACT Labor Senator Katie Gallagher has revealed she was a British citizen for six weeks after the 2016 election when renunciation of it was confirmed. The High Court has previously ruled that an MP must take reasonable steps to renounce their foreign citizenship before nominating for Parliament. This is a grey area of Section 44 of the Constitution, and as a result, she should be referred to the High Court. The government is still pursuing the eligibility of Lower House Labor MPs Justin Key and Susan Lamb, who did not receive confirmation of their renunciation until after the election as well. Labor, more than any other party during the citizenship saga, has sought to protect their MPs they suspected of being dual citizens. The honourable and correct course of action is if an MP's eligibility is in doubt, they should be referred to the High Court. There has been major fallout from the actions of Nationals MP George Christensen, who it was revealed was the unnamed Coalition MP who had told Andrew Bolt they would quit the Coalition unless Turnbull was replaced. Over the weekend, he backed away from that threat and claimed the government calling the Banking Royal Commission had convinced him to stay. Andrew Bolt has stated that Christensen has behaved uh, very badly by not following through on his threat and probably feels that he has been used by Christensen to do his political dirty work. Malcolm Turnbull is also not happy and has been ringing Andrew Bolt's bosses at News Corp demanding he be disciplined. George Christensen is looking like the MP who cried wolf as it's not the first time he has threatened to quit the coalition. United States Special Counsel Robert Mueller's investigation into the Trump campaign's links with Russia has seen Trump's former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn plead guilty to lying to the FBI over his meetings with Russian Ambassador to the United States Sergei Kislyak. Given that it has been speculated that Flynn has avoided more serious charges, he is likely now cooperating with Mueller's investigation. Again, there is no smoking gun which proves Trump colluded with Russia, although Mueller's strategy would appear to be uh, finding charges against Trump's allies so he can extract any information from them that he considers useful. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and check back here tomorrow to see what is happening right now there.